guests were not understanding where we're living. It took me almost one and a half hour to come here. Um, anyway, today we have a special person from Nepal, a very good friend of us, Nayan Tara. Um, we have a long collaboration with Photo Circle. Uh, I think Photo Circle is a certain kind of institution who are doing almost a similar kind of thing that we are trying to do in uh, Bangladesh. I think um, it's really important to uh, do certain things where you will develop certain kind of people who will take the lead in the next generation. Um, and uh, there's a certain kind of warmth that at least I have felt that every time I go to Nepal and meet the young photographers and uh, you know everything was happening there. Um, and I hope that um, you know there will be more collaboration between the SARC countries. I think I have traveled more in Europe than in South Asia. It's so sad, but it's just the visa process is so complicated in this part of the world. We live so close, but it feels like we don't know each other. But that's not the case with me, but thanks God. So here is Nan Tara, who's going to present uh, works from him. Thank you to Lena um, for having us back. This year we have an exhibition in festival um, by Nepal Picture Library. It's an old archive. Northbrook Hall. Um, for those of you have, who have not made it down to Old Dhaka, you, I would definitely recommend it. They've done an amazing job. Um, the works are, are really um, living. Um, coming to life uh, with the curation that the team has put in. Um, today I am um, here to share some work from Nepal and about Nepal. As Wasif said, we uh, Photo Circle um, is a platform for photography and photographers uh, in Nepal. We've been working for the last um, close to eight years now. Um, teaching photography, we are not fortunate in Nepal to have an amazing school like Patshala, so we do our best. Um, but we have collaborated, we've had the good fortune to collaborate with Patshala quite closely in the last um, uh, four or five years. And um, it's it's been, we feel really fortunate to be uh, an hour's flight away from Dhaka and to be able to um, have the resources that an institution like Patshala makes available not only to Bangladesh but uh, really to the to the region. So the works that um, some of the works that I will show today have been produced uh, or have been at least started during collaborative workshops that we've had. Uh, some of which have been with Patshala. Um, you know, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, the idea of representation today. Um, not to go into it too much. I mean, yesterday's talk on Edward Curtis was great. You know, um, Shamum did an amazing job of sort of critiquing the critique. Um, uh, and, um, and we don't want to obviously fall into these traps, the, the, the easy critique of, you know, the outsiders coming in and misrepresenting and so on and so forth. But I did want to raise a few questions today um, through the work. So I think um, I will start with this body of work um, by a Nepali photographer, Surendra Lawati, who is currently based in uh, Canada in Toronto and in this body of work Surendra Lawati speaks about um, ethnic religious gender um, and uh, other minorities in Nepal who um, are really fighting an, a new fight to be included in in political and social systems because as some of you might know, Nepal has been a 
um, a monarchy, a Hindu monarchy, for over 240 years. And quite recently, um, uh, after having gone through a 10-year um, Maoist civil conflict from 1996 to 2006, um, in 2008, Nepal uh, became what is now quite a mouthful, a federal democratic republic. And in this process, um, there have been many um, groups, um, uh, a minority groups have been, who have been fighting for their rights to, be, to have their rights included in um, the political process and eventually the, a new constitution which we are still working on, on writing. We just missed uh, a second deadline on the 22nd of January, just a few days ago. Um, the, the political parties are sort of in, in a major <coughs> deadlock. Um, and this issue of um, ethnic representation is really at the heart of it. It's one of the most contentious uh, issues. And so Surendra Dai's work is uh, in that, or res in this respect, really important in documenting um, some of the voices of, of um, uh, the various groups that are fighting. So his work is accompanied by several poems. Um, I'm going to read one of them out uh, to you as the slideshow uh, begins. So the poem is called Ashang, Think for Yourself. Those souls of yours which steer rickshaws must now steer the country and the universe. Your tireless hands, which shove load carts, must raise your own culture and people. Deceived sometimes by religion and sometimes by your facial features, seek now the sky of your own sunrise. Seek out feet which will take you to high peaks. You too are a person like others. You too are a citizen like the others of this country. Give up your foolish sincerity now, alongside your auditioned identity. The country is yours as well. The universe is yours as well. Your rights exist here too. And so search for your missing self, recall your forgotten history. And, and Ashang, your son Teba birthed by your young lass, what should his future be like? Think, think about this for yourself. Nepal is a, a really, uh, for, for such a small country, a really diverse country in terms of ethnicity, religion, um, and other social minorities. And um, this poem was by Pratap Boltamal and has been translated to English by Manjushri Thapa uh, who's one of the leading um, authors, uh, nep authors of from Nepal. And ha being from an ethnic minority group himself, Surendra Lauti, um, but, but having been away from Nepal for over 24 years now, um, having lived in the West for 24 years, um, he came back home to work on this particular body of work really as, as, a, as a way to re-engage with his own search for his own sort of finding his place in, in the world, but within the Nepali um, structure of, um, of being Nepali. I, I myself am really interested in my own personal work about Nepali identity, and, and Surendra Dai's work really brings to light you know, along with the photographs, he has um, hours and hours of audio interviews with each of these um, people and representing each of these groups. And uh, recently, um, in November last year, we did an exhibition of the work for the first time in Nepal. And uh, it's, a, it's an ongoing body of work, but uh, what I present to you here is what we presented in the exhibition. The next body of work, um, The New Silk Road, is by Prasit Stapit. Um, 
a young photographer who has participated in several workshops um, here at Pakshala 2. Um, in this body of work, Prasit um, is looking at this new highway that has been built um, from Shabrubesi to Raswagari, which is in the northern um, uh, belt of Nepal bordering China. And as you know, Nepal is this little piece of land between um, two huge countries, uh, China to the north and India to the south, east and west. And um, geography and, and geopolitics obviously affects um, life in Nepal and, and in many, many ways. And Prasit was looking at um, this one strip of land, this one new road that has been built um, to sort of you know, facilitate trade and travel into Nepal from China um, at an accelerated uh, rate, um, but also brings many concerns of cultural um, uh, appropriation. A lot of people in that area in particular where this road is being built is um, of Tibetan origin and, uh, and are very, very concerned about this new development um, that the road brings, but also these cultural sort of influences um, from China. Um, feel an increased Chinese presence, uh, especially in the last five to six years. Um, there is a, a much higher interest, uh, it seems, within China to visit Nepal for tourism. Obviously, trade is a big um, way we interact. Um, but it has really accelerated in the last um, five to six years. Um, in an unprecedented way, and uh, it brings economic opportunities, but uh, also many, many concerns. Um, this body of work by Kishore Sharma um, is a really uh, important, um, almost um, ethnographical um, effort to, to document uh, the Rautes, who are known as the last nomads of Nepal. Um, the last census that was conducted, uh, I think, um, tells us that there are only 140 uh, Rautes left in Nepal now. Um, these people are a very um, proud people. They want to, they, they really uh, sort of take a stance and, and try to continue their way of life. Um, nomadic way of life, but uh, you know, it's in becoming increasingly difficult uh, every year. At the moment, um, the government of Nepal supports uh, the Rautes by giving them um, an allowance of about 12 US dollars uh, a month, and this sustains them, but at the same time, this has made them increasingly dependent on the state and on these external um, structures. Um, Communist community forestry uh, in the 70s um, was, has been a really big success story for Nepal in many, many ways, um, where deforestation has really been come under control. But, um, but this has also impacted the way of life for 
uh, the Rautis and several other um, nomadic groups that used to really depend on the forests um, for their livelihoods. has been working on this body of work for about a um, little over three years now. And uh, as the Rautes are still nomadic, um, he, he sort of keeps going back uh, and trying to find them in the western hills of Nepal. Um, but this too is an ongoing body of work and I think Kishore is uh, hoping to, to be working on a book fairly soon. Um, with this work. So this is Shikhar Bhattrai, um, a new body of work that he has recently started, um, also an ongoing body of work. Um, it's quite at the initial sort of exploration uh, stage at the moment. Shikhar um, is a pretty avid uh, traveler and a trekker uh, and uh, finds himself up in the mountains. And uh, for this body of work, he is in the Mustang region uh, in and around a place called Marfa. And, uh, and this is a place that is, uh, you know, a big tourist attraction. It's um, thronged with hundreds and thousands of tourists from around the world. Um, and of course, portrayed through postcards and, uh, and really beautiful imagery. Um, but Shikhar was really trying to, you know, get a sense for that place, um, create a sort of counter narrative to, to what is seen um, in the eyes of the world. Um, the place is increasingly getting to be a lonely place. Um, people are there for tourism, even local people. They move to Marfa to cater to um, tourists, set up businesses for tourists. Um, and a lot of people from Marfa, the people who originate there, have moved out and have moved to close by cities, Pokhara, Kathmandu, or have moved abroad. Um, looking for better prospects um, in life, I suppose.
Um, I wanted to include two bodies of work um, by Arantxa, but I had a bit of a technical glitch this morning and my laptop died. <laughs> so I had to rush and uh, re-download some files and put this together. But, but I'll go with this one. Um, Arantxa Sedi is a, a Spanish photographer who was based in, um, in Nepal for a while. And uh, she began this um, portrait series on, on Nepali women who were who she found were breaking rules, you know. And I think Arancha felt uh, when she was in Nepal that she was told uh, many stories about how Nepali women are really um, discriminated against, are really uh, do not find uh, inequality in society in many ways, which is um, a true story, definitely. Um, but uh, then she decided to, uh, then she started to meet, um, I think, several women who, who had amazing stories to tell, and uh, she decided to embark on this journey. Um, it's a conceptual piece, uh, a series uh, of portraits. She's used, um, um, gone out to old studios in and around Kathmandu and begged, borrowed, I think, stolen some of their old backdrops. Um, against which she's placed these, these women who have these amazing stories to tell. So as the, the portrait series goes on, I'm, I'm going to tell you about some of these women. Um, Ashmina Ranjit um, is a <coughs> well-known name in Nepali contemporary arts for her groundbreaking innovations of live art performance along with video installations, painting, drawings, and sound. Her themes comprise mostly of social political issues and gender issues. Meena Choudhury is Nepal's first female Mahout. Um, a Mahout is an elephant rider. She comes from an illiterate and poor family and now has become their main source of financial support. Ani Choyung Dolma is a world-renowned singer who is also a nun. Uh, the, she runs the Nuns Welfare Foundation of Nepal, a non-profit organization promoting the education and welfare of Buddhist nuns. Jama Kimire is a poet who writes with her left foot, having been born with cerebral palsy. She has been awarded with Nepal's most prestigious literary prize, the Madan Puraskar, for her autobiographical Jivan Kanda Ki Phool. Bhumika Shrestha is the first officially transgendered member of the Nepali Congress, a major political party in Nepal. She is also a member of the Blue Diamond Society, the first organization working for sexual minorities in Nepal. Mona Ansari is the first um, Muslim advocate working with the National Women's Commission. She is highly respected as an attorney at uh, law working in partnership with various national and international organizations. Lucky Chetri is the founder of Three Sisters Adventure Trekking Company and director at Empowering Women of Nepal. She's also the first Nepali woman to be a mountaineer guide. Indira Ranamagar set up Prisons Assistance Nepal to help care for children whose parents are in prison. She has been the only woman working inside prisons in Nepal for the last 20 years. Soni Rana is the first Nepali female pilot. She works for Nepal Airlines. Sarina Rai is the lead singer of a punk music group, Rai Koris. Sarina uses her music to advocate for the rights of women in Nepal. She's also a music teacher in her community and is currently teaching Jeet Kune Do, a uh, martial arts technique used by actor Bruce Lee in <laughs> for used for self-defense. <coughs> Mandira Sharma is a winner of Human Rights Watch Defender Award. She helped found Advocacy Forum and is um, really focused on achieving accountability for abuses committed by both sides um, of the war that we had during the fighting. And Kiran Bajracharya is a deputy superintendent of police who has instructed self-defense training for over a thousand police officers and is trying to change the police behavior towards women and children in Nepal. 
She has also done training in South Africa for the juvenile justice system. So, you know, Arancha was really trying to, I think, um, in, in her own way, um, she used to tell me these stories about how she would feel less hopeless in Nepal when she was meeting these people and, and really inspired. She has now moved back to, to live in Spain. Um, this is a young uh, Nepali photographer, Uma Bista, who's actually here in the audience. Um, sorry, I forgot to introduce Shikhar to you. He's also here in the audience. And uh, I have to apologize for the files, um, but, I, but I really wanted to share the work with you anyway. Um, this happened during my early morning technical disaster. But um, Uma um, has started this body of work um, really trying to think about you know, the role um, of women within Hinduism and how <coughs> women are constantly praying and sort of practicing religion, but always for other people. So they're fasting for their husbands, they're fasting for their children. Um, there are days in the week where they're fasting for the gods. Um, so this is, this is the start of a body of work, a beautiful body of work. Um, on the fast. And uh, I'm almost done. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, so that's what I have uh, in terms of contemporary work being produced. But uh, I just wanted to end um, by sharing this one a short, a very small selection of this one collection, um, which is in the Nepal Picture Library. Um, just to sort of get us to think a little bit about, you know, as image makers and as storytellers, what our role is um, in, um, in creating or negating stereotypes and in, in reinforcing ideas um, of places and people. Um, Mukunda Badu Shrestha um, is this photographer who's now 87 years old, he's still alive. And he was the first photographer commissioned by the government of Nepal um, in the early 60s. Um, and you have to remember that Nepal was closed to the outside world until the 50s, um, which, uh, at which point um, it was opened up to tourism. And uh, soon after, you know, the government tried to really sort of um, actively create an image of Nepal for the world to consume um, and, and then uh, to, to promote Nepal as this tourist destination. Um, so the early people who began to throng were definitely the, the hippie generation, or the, the flower trail featured Kathmandu quite prominently. But Mukunda Badrushesta was commissioned by the government to go around the country, travel around, and make pictures um, that would then eventually were made into postcards, posters, um, other kinds of promotional material, and were actively sent out across the world uh, through international media and other channels to promote Nepal as this, this idyllic Shangri-La. Um, we did indeed attract a lot of people, but what is interesting and uh, you know, what is problematic in, at, at times is uh, quite often is that this image st is still the image of Nepal. 
um, in most parts of the West at least. Um, and so we wanted to share just some of these images that this man made. Um, uh, he was a practicing photographer, um, st had started in the, in the 50s. Um, he'd stumbled upon photography quite accidentally. Uh, an uncle of his had a camera and um, he would allow him to borrow the camera once in a while and he would run about. And then eventually he was offered um, a, another job and then this was his second professional photography gig going around and shooting um, for what was then the tourism department um, with within the Ministry of Tourism. So we have been working with this photographer um, to archive his work. His collection contains about 11,000 images, um, not all of which um, were for work. There were a lot of images um, that he took just for pleasure, friends and family too. I haven't included most of that um, stuff in, in this presentation, um, even though we really do think that that is um, almost the more interesting stuff in his archive. But I wanted to just leave you with this thought of, you know, creating images and, um, you know, this man was an insider very much, you know, at least he was Nepali. Um, but he was a Nepali man of Newar origins from the Kathmandu Valley, quite privileged, was sent around the country to make these images, um, you know, representing culture, representing people and ideas. And quite often now, as younger photographers uh, making work, um, I think we do have to question ourselves. Um, you know, it's not just the external gaze that can stereotype, and um, a lot of times we're always asking ourselves about how perhaps we carry a lot of this imagery of our own country um, in us because we grew up with it, and you know, that was what we consumed um, as young people ourselves. And so really asking of ourselves, um, uh, being conscious of um, the stories um, and the responsibility in a way uh, that we have um, with each image that we make and each story that we tell. That's it. Thank you. Hello. Thank you, Nayantara. Um, does anybody have any questions? Can we switch on the lights? <coughs> Nayantara, thank you for that. Uh, it was really uh, an eye opener, and thank you for those beautiful images. You mentioned at the beginning that uh, Nepal has had a turbulent history, uh, a history of, of political uh, strife, a history of trying to find its uh, political identity. Uh, somehow I have missed seeing any, any images of a very long-standing political confrontation that has happened between the different establishments of your country, uh, which probably are a, quite an important part of the national identity and the national uh, psyche. Um, are there any such images, or uh, or have you not shown them uh, to us over here? Do you mean the war, the Maoist war? Exactly, the yeah. Maoist war, the, 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 the change of a country from um, almost a backwater, you know, hilly kingdom to a Maoist uh, revolution, and then onward towards this mouthful, as you described, as a democratic, federal, regulated, whatever country, mm -hmm. and so on. So this particular transition, which I have found perhaps in Bangladesh is very actively um, photographed and, and you know, um, sort of uh, yeah. collected in that town. You know, that's interesting because I, f when I look at these, maybe, okay, when I look at these stories, I think these are completely about that transformation, you know, without showing the guns and the flags. Um, because a lot of these stories, um, are sort of these aftermath stories um, of this tran transformation that has taken place. Um, the Raute's, Kishore's work, if you remember, 
um, the, the the transition in society and politics and, and the country at large has definitely affected their way of life. Um, Marfa, the place that Shikal was making work in, um, you know, I failed to mention, I mentioned it briefly, but a lot of people are leaving Nepal in the thousands um, at the moment. Migration, out-migration is a huge, huge um, issue at the moment, and that is very deeply rooted in the conflict. Um, for, for over 10 years, people were not able to find stability in their villages, in their towns, and so people were moving out um, to close, uh, you know, close by urban centers, but then out of Nepal as well, finding jobs. More than half, I don't know what the exact statistic it is, but, is, but definitely more than half of the country's working population is in the, in the Arab world or in Malaysia or in South Korea working at the moment. Um, so I guess to answer your question, um, no, there aren't, uh, I mean, people have, the war has been documented. Philip Blankensop, who was here with us last night, um, has a body of work um, when he came into Nepal in 2001, 2002, I think, and one more trip maybe, 2000, I'm not sure which year, but he did go into the, the jungles and sort of documented the guerrillas. Some of that work is in his exhibition at Patshala now. Um, there were local journalists, mostly, who were documenting the war. Um, the story I wanted to tell was sort of, you know, this everyday life that goes beyond the emblematic stuff, um, but that really is about political transformation and other kinds of transformation. Anyone else? <coughs> Thank you, Noel Tara, for the exhibition <coughs> in Nodbrook Hall. And uh, I just want to hear from you about how you started the working on the Nepali archive, National Archive, and uh, how you collect the pictures and the expenses and how you preserve it. I really want to know the process. Um, so Nepal Picture Library, which is what the archive is called, was set up about four years ago. Um, we are a digital archive, so we don't retain any originals. The work, um, initially we started by going to the work. For example, uh, Mukunda Badur Shrestha was actually the first photographer we worked with. Um, his collection was the first collection that we archived. So initially we were really seeking collections out and going to them. And um, over time now, slowly people have begun to hear about the archives. So they are coming to us with the work. We are still seeking. Um, work and we, at the moment, to give you an example, we're really trying to mine um, old photo studios that are quickly beginning to dump all the old um, analog material they had given this huge transition to digital. So there are particular collections that we actively pursue, um, but uh, people have also started bringing their work to us. And we collect family albums, but we also collect um, uh, c archives of professional photographers, people who haven't had the time and the resources to archive their own work. We work with them. Um, what was the, oh, finances? Oh my goodness, I don't even know how we finance ourselves, but it's like piece by piece every day. Seth finds it very funny. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's been a mix of, um, it's been primarily grants, I should say, um, that's kept the work going. Um, but Photo Circle also has um, a commercial sort of face where we sell our services, photography, design, anything and everything to do with photography, exhibition management, curation. And uh, that pays the overheads. But we're a very, very small team, so in a way that helps but it also doesn't. There's never enough people, never enough hands on the deck. Um, we're six people full time. So yeah, that's the archive. <coughs> uh, I would like to say that uh, what Saif is saying, 
when you see, when I see work of Nepal, I don't actually want to reflect my country's work with Nepal because Nepal is a different culture, different type of working condition. And what I have felt that in nature also, the people are different than us. So we should not feel like that what we do in Bangladesh, Nepali photographers should do in Nepal. And this body of work actually shows a lot about Nepal if you really understand the political things which happen. The blood, the fighting does not always tell the story. Sometimes the coming out of the thing and making it into something successful tell the story of what Nepal have gone through. So I would like to congratulate Noyantara. It's a wonderful presentation. Thank you. Yes. <laughs>